All right, Kev, time for the WTF clip of the week. Uh, what are we about to see? Well, Patrick, you know, I had Steve Bannon. He, he was busy being Steve Bannon. Um, and I had this terrific mashup of because uh, he, he was sh shitting all over Elizabeth Warren. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. He was discussing Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> and I made this terrific mashup of Saturday Night Live um, uh, kind of, you know, how they play Elizabeth Warren. And I kind of worked it all together. And uh, for those who don't know, sometimes we get in trouble from the copyright uh, police. <laughs> and, and so we learned this the hard way that we have to actually put up our picture, uh, our, our WTFs and check and see if it'll make the sensors. And this one didn't make it. And I tried to fix it up. I tried to cut out and make it a little bit less and I couldn't get it done. And so the long and short of it is that my terrific uh, SNL, Elizabeth Warren, Steve Bannon mashup didn't make it. And I was forced to improvise, and it's not that funny, Patrick. It's kind of it's interesting, but it's not that funny, and it has to do with the. Fact All right, well, let's Steve, watch it. Well, let's just watch it because it, it is yeah. interesting. It's just not it's not one of my funnier ones. It's more kind of interesting. All right. You you were talking about some of the uh, the toss up states and that it was going to be tough, but Muhammad Ali had done the impossible, recapturing the heavyweight title from George Foreman, but he was not satisfied. There was one man who'd given him too much trouble, one man who could be pointed to as evidence that perhaps Ali was not the greatest of all time. But, but I think in the backdrop, we were thinking about Biden, or he was, the, he was the presumptive front runner then. I don't know whether it's changed with everything we've seen, all the other stuff in the past two weeks, but how would, would an Elizabeth Warren uh, presidency, what does China think of Elizabeth Warren? And, and what do you think of her chances if, if she did become the nominee? That man was Smoke and Joe Frazier. The two had met twice previously. Their first encounter, the fight of the century, had already become ingrained in American psyche as one of the greatest matches in history. The insane action had been fueled in part by the intense personal dislike the two champions felt for each other. Al well, it's interesting, you know, she's just coming out with now the series of white papers. She's actually trying to get to the right of President Trump. Lee had so enraged Joe that in his locker room before the fight, Frazier had prayed to God to help him kill Ali. Except for her not fully understanding the tariffs. If you look at Elizabeth Warren, you look at some of the Democrats, they're trying to get to the right of President Trump. On when the fight first began, Ali had seemed capable of handling Frazier easily, proving himself the first opponent with the talent to read Frazier's erratic rhythm, the reflexes to spot small openings, and the speed to take advantage of them. But then, Frazier had begun to penetrate Ali's defenses, his erratic bobs and weaves getting past Ali's renowned rapid-fire lead hand. Frazier was soon thumping shots into his rival's body, doubling him over and enticing him to lower his guard. The result was a back-and-forth battle for the ages. But in China, one of the reasons they understand that Biden is compromised by China, they understand in the upper Midwest in these primaries, they've got a real opportunity to blow Joe Biden out of the water. Because the way Frazier leaped into his lead hook let him rapidly cover an incredible amount of distance. And it was Al Lee who had tasted the canvas, cementing Frazier's triumph and destroying any and all doubt about who was the real heavyweight champion of the world. Because Joe Biden is totally compromised, his family's compromised, and he's compromised with his history during the Obama administration, particularly about the South China Sea and other issues. The two would meet again only a few years later. Circumstances had changed, and both were now top contenders, fighting for a chance to take their title back from George Foreman. The two men's intense dislike for each other was again showcased on national television a few days before the bout, when a real fight broke out between them on the set of a talk show. That's why I said, and I think I've said this from the beginning, is that Elizabeth Warren is going to have a centrist challenger. That For their second fight, Ali had planned numerous ways to negate Frazier's aggressive style. He stopped short to lead him into flurries, kept his elbows in tight when clinching so Frazier could not pummel his hands through, and used Frazier's head movement against him, using one punch to lead Frazier into another. That will either be Michael Bloomberg, or I think I said on your show, Hillary Clinton. I think Clinton and Bloomberg are looking as Biden starts to collapse, and I think Biden's collapse is, is pretty intimate. Ali stole the later rounds, turning the fight around and avenging his loss. By November, December, I think you're going to see a centrist challenge Elizabeth Warren, and we'll see how that plays out, but I think... Leading up to the fight, Ali continued his old shenanigans, holding up a gorilla meant to represent Frazier and proclaiming, it'll be a killer, a chilla, a thriller, when I get the gorilla in Manila. I think the Democrats 
in the wanting to replace Donald Trump understand that Elizabeth Warren and some of the populists have been so driven to the left, particularly some of her things about capitalism, some of her things about these asset taxes. As always, Frazier was not amused. To quote the man himself, I still despised him for trying to misrepresent me to the public. No one gave his heart and soul to the sport as I did. This was a nasty, envious, mean-spirited egomaniac who still couldn't stand the fact that in the biggest fight of his life, I'd put him on his ass. No, They've been so driven to the left that a centrist is going to have a real opportunity here. And I, I, I don't discount at all that you may see an Ali Frazier, you know, rematch in Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. And then it was over. The round ended and Smoke and Joe Frazier was still standing. Through all the rounds and all the fights, Ali had never once put him down. Barely able to see, the referee guided Frazier back to his corner. As Ali sat down, he had a terrifying realization. He was not sure how much longer he could go on. Of course, he didn't know about Fletch's decision. All he knew was that Frazier had taken him to his absolute limit, to a place that he'd never been before, a place he would later call the closest thing to death. In Frazier's corner, coach Eddie Futch, who'd been witness to fighters die in the ring before, had seen enough. I'm going to stop it, Futch told Frazier. You're taking too much punishment. Joe protested. No, don't. I want him, boss. Blind, battered, beaten, Frazier was in no condition to fight. It's all over, son, Futch told him. No one will ever forget what you did here today. And so the greatest fight in boxing history came to a close. Ali could not believe it. He stood and raised his hands in victory. A moment later, he fell to the floor. To quote the man himself, I was so relieved, so tired, and in so much pain that my knees buckled, and I stretched right out where I was, right there in the middle of the ring. He had taken 440 hard, solid punches from Joe Frazier. Many throughout the years have romanticized the so-called lost round, wondering what would have happened if Frazier had been allowed to come out for the 15th. But the truth is, both men had already given what they had to give. Both had left a piece of themselves in that ring, and for each, it was a piece that they would never fully get back. Perhaps Ali said it best. We went to Manila as champions, Joe and me, and we came back as old men. Kev, that wasn't very funny. <laughs> well, it's not <laughs> funny, but it's interesting because I didn't know the I'm story. I'm only saying I, that because you told me it wasn't supposed to be funny. So. Yeah, but it's just yeah. – I, I actually found it amazing. I didn't understand the story of uh, Frazier and Ali over the years, and uh, I do think it was interesting in Steve Bannon showing his age a little bit when he's using that reference. And so now at least all the millennials and even the Gen Xs, because let's face it, I think I was five years old when that first – that last fight went, went uh, between Frazier and uh, – Ali, um, I think that now everyone, all the younger people, will know what they're talking about when the, when Steve Bannon is making his references. <laughs> all right, all right, let's move on.